who would have won the 1980 Mr. Olympia contest if it had been judged according to merit rather than from a supplement marketing perspective? Who represented the best combination of mass, definition, shape, symmetry, and proportion on that day in Sydney, Australia, some 43 years ago? Opinions, of course, are as varied as the people who hold them, but informed opinions are far more meaningful. Bill Pearl, who would have been the head judge of the contest had he not recused himself when he saw what was transpiring, was clear in his opinion. Well, if I had been a judge that day and I had voted, I would have personally voted for Boyer Cole. That was my pick that day. I can't help it. That's the way I saw the contest. I was. <laughs> That's it. But what did the opinions of the competitors that day? Certainly they would know what it takes to win a bodybuilding championship, as they were all Mr. Universe champions. Indeed, one man, Frank Zane, had even won the Mr. Olympia title three times by 1980. And two more men, Chris Dickerson and Samir Banut, would go on to win Mr. Olympia titles two and three years after the 1980 Mr. Olympia contest. Here is what the competitors had to say on who should have won the 1980 Mr. Olympia contest. I, I, I felt if either Burko, Mike Mensah, or Chris Dickerson, or even Frank Zay, if any of those four won, I don't think it could be disputed. Like the difference between them could, must be less than half a percent. Who would you have placed in first? As good as Frank Zane was, I thought on that day, uh, Mike Mensa and Boya Co were better. Uh, Boya looked good, but I think Boya had a certain reason needed to be better, in my opinion. But he was hard. I, I thought Dickerson, Mike Mensa, Frank Zane, they were really all I had in mind. I had a long I'd say maybe Boya Co Mensa needs to win. Chris Dickerson next. Dickerson, I don't think, deserved even second. And Arnold definitely deserved first. Cohen Mensner were in great shape. So uh, I thought really a contest was between Mensner, Cohen, and myself. Thank you. Once again, I thought Chris looked good. A lot of things, Chris obviously came out there. But I never picked Chris as the winner. I don't know why. Frank, Frank was in good shape. He had improved a lot since two weeks ago at the, at the Miss Olympia, but he was still a little thin. I thought Mike was in excellent shape, and I was in excellent shape at their home. You know who I was afraid of? Little Danny Padilla was ready for that part. From Tutu, eight. I think the eight was fair. And then you, you make your own choices as far as the body type you like. I'm not going to speculate on is this guy so that take Arnold out because he wouldn't have made the eight. He wouldn't have made the seven right. So from two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think Dennis Tenorino was eight. Um, Roy Callender was I've seen Roy in better shape in the eighty. I think he was a little off. I think he was lucky to get that high. But generally speaking, from T to A, which should have been, would have been where the proper contest would have, would have become. And the reality is, Arnold looked good, but not the Arnold that we're used to seeing. Roy Callender looked great, but he had weak legs. But to me, uh, Boyer was in great shape. Uh, Mike was definitely in shape, even Zane. But Roger Walker was outstanding. He was huge. He was cut. And Dennis Tenorino, to me, it was one of the best times uh, that he put his physique together at this show. So like Boyer says, I agree. Any one of those guys could have gone in there and pushed. I had won the heavyweight division of Mr. Olympia the year before, losing the overall to Frank Zane in a controversial division. And a lot of people, including myself, thought that uh, I had a very good chance to win the 80 Olympia. And I thought I should have won. A lot of people thought so. 
Mike was a great bodybuilder. Um, so, so was Arnold. Uh, I got to tell you that. Uh, I don't, you know, I, it's hard for Arnold to lose that year. He's one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time entering the Olympia after a five-year layoff. It's hard for him not to win. Granted, all of the judges were his buddies, his friends. Put one whole year of my life into training for that competition and seeing the thing turn into one big fiasco, mainly because there was one individual that decided he was going to do what he wanted when he wanted, just turn the thing into a fiasco. I think he did not have the best physique on that day. And, uh, you know, it's no question in my mind that the Arnold's friends who were on the judging panel marked Mike down to the chefs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the whole crowd felt that. They would have had a different set of judges. Mentor might have won. You know, a lot of people felt he could have won. Even though I didn't win, um, I'd always maintained that more important than winning was the, the process, the attaining of, of your goal which is getting in top shape for your best condition. Mike Nista came in and did a great job with it, but it was not to be because the Wheeler system is the dominant system. They're not gonna allow heavy duty to take over. It's not possible. And I think that was one of the things that really, you know, caused it downfall to Mike. Yeah. But he was a great bodybuilder. He had a great physique. He and I were great competitors. I still miss him sometimes because I knew that he really tried to introduce something that was different and that would change the course of bodybuilding. But at yes. that time, it was difficult to get it in there because of weed. It's the weed system. That's why Arnold came back, see? They knew they weren't going to let Arnold become in second to Mike. It's not possible. It's so, a business. It, by that point, it's a business. So Joe Weed is going to save himself. He's going to put Arnold there. Arnold, everybody knew that if he did that, Arnold was going to win.